Back. I was saying that I'd love to do like a would you rather. Yeah. I ha- I've thought of one would you would you rather. I couldn't think of a lot now because my brain's not working. I I I'll one. think of one as well. What what it. is would you rather again? It's like like I know like you just say one or the other. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Give yeah. me an example. Okay, so my one I thought for you was would you rather have all your sewing machines were hands <laughs> that were hand sewing things or that your hands were two sewing machines for the rest of your life. That's such a good one. Say it again. <laughs> so basically, okay, say you're in your workshop. Yeah. And anytime you went to go buy a sewing machine, they were like, sorry, we only have the hand sewers. So instead of a sewing machine, it was two hands that were hand sewing things. Okay. Or that if your own hands oh. were sewing machines. Okay. The fact and that you, had you no understood hands. what she was saying, you two spent too much time together. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, that's a great one. I was like, in English. <laughs> so good. You were like, love that. I love that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Great work on me. <laughs> anyway, what's your answer? For sure, the sewing machine hands. Yeah. So your hands are sewing machines? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't mind. But like, say, I, I know this is the elaboration I'll cover them now. I'll fur and no one will notice. You have to think about like, <laughs> say if you're getting down a dirty, sexy time. Yeah. You're going to sew up your fella's d- penis. Oh, you fuck. can't use your hands in a sexual way. You can't hold your baby's hand. When yeah. you give birth, they, they might hold on to the needle of the sewing machine, but they won't be holding on to your you finger. Can, you can have sex like this. Yeah. Handcuff time. Handcuff job. <laughs> your mouth's still working. Your punani's still working. And I think um, I would just still with the sewing machines. You can't talk me out of it. Okay. Because it would just be so amazing for business. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Your own working sweatshop. Yeah. Yeah, you're literally one. Okay, that's a good one. Emer, do you that's have That's a good one. I'll think of one to write the podcast. Um, Because I have a few in my head, but I'm like... They're very niche. Yeah, that was like a really... When that, now, that one was tailor-made for you. Yeah. That's tailor-made, I mean. excuse the pun. Yeah. I... <laughs> We are spending too much time together. Yeah. Oh, I love us. I would have need to be prepared if they're tailor-made, but I think I'll try think as I go. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, well anyway, introduce yourself here. We're on air. We're on air. <laughs> My name is Rachel Maguire. Woohoo! Also known as Rashid. Love. Now, where does Rashid come from? You probably, I know you've answered this before, but like, where does Rashid come from? I actually haven't answered this before because it's such a boring answer but everyone always thinks their answers are boring because you're familiar with it because you're Rashid because you're you are the one and only Rashid but other people are very interested no no it's genuinely boring and and I say that in interviews if they ask I'll just be like I'm not telling it's a secret because oh. it's so it's just like let's say I was at a session and one of the guys was hanging around with Lowe's was just like Rashid passes a beer and it just I just loved the sound of it and he kept being like Rashid passes this do you know and he just kept calling me that he's just the type of guy to make nicknames for everyone okay and um my original name on Instagram was Rachel Skagwire love so love. then <laughs> when I started posting my designs I was like this isn't professional enough what's the next best thing <laughs> Rashid <laughs> so I just changed it to Rashid and as you probably know Instagram names stick yeah mm-hmm. yeah so someone might just say oh you're the girl Rashid or whatever and it was just like almost before I knew too late to change it and it, it just rung a bell yeah oh, I think it's I deadly it. though I think it's really good yeah I'm like obsessed. what else would it be like I you know. obviously don't want it to be like Rachel Maguire design no like that's like next or something yeah that's a bit boring so, Rashid so is, true and the logo and everything like I feel like it suits your personality Mm. Do you know what I mean? I love it. I love it now that it is it. But people are always like, where are you from? Are you like Russian or are you like Arabic? Or like, it's so funny. People think that's my name if they don't know me as Rachel. Yeah. Like they'll say, they think my name is Rashid. I'd go with it. It is a nice name. I'd go with it. It yeah, is. It's, it's a cool it name. It is. And uh, when did you change that, did you say? From Rachel sure. Skag Maguire. <laughs> Skagwire. <laughs> For sure, like six, seven years ago now. Okay. Yeah. As I'm- soon as I joined fashion design, maybe. Okay, so like you've kind of always been five years. Rashid then when yeah. you started fashion For design. For as long as I can remember. And have you always wanted to do fashion design? Um, No, I was definitely, I dipped my toes in a few things. Like I did marketing and DIT for a week. I Love. did social science in UCD, maybe two weeks. Like I did a psychology diploma. Uh, I was very lost, didn't know what I wanted to do. And I was just doing those things to kind of keep the parents happy. I had no idea what I wanted to do. And then um, I was going through those years where, you know, you're just a bit wild and you aren't ready to take anything seriously. So I had those years and maybe after three years of 
uh, leaving school, uh, I was at definitely a low point and I met with my old art teacher from school because we always connected and it was my friend's mom. Her name was Marlene Kramer and she was my fashion illustration teacher. And she, for in school, maybe I was eight, nine, 10, 11. And she said, I had to drag you out of the class when we were doing fashion illustration. You, this is like, look at how you're dressed, look at your personality, uh, do fashion. And it was just meeting her at a low moment where I was just ready to listen to anyone that was able to help. And uh, I, d I decided to start it and then never looked back kind of thing. That's, That's so, so interesting. That's so... <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's not being the same person at this point. That's, that's, I was about to say that's so inspiring. That's I'm that's actually so interesting. Because I thought when you see people who are so su successful like you and it's real like tunnel vision, this is what I want to do. It always seems like you've known for your whole life that you wanted to be in fashion. Like you wake up and you're like, yeah, like when you're a baby. Because you would like, think oh that God. you've been sewing hats since you came out of the womb with your sewing machine hands. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you came out of the womb and you were like, get me some fur immediately, yeah. you know? And your mom was like, get me the epidural. And you were like, get me some fur right now. But um, yeah, that's so inspiring that you did other things beforehand. And were your parents like pissed off that you... Now, I know my parents would just be like, oh, here we go again. And like yeah, not yeah. believe in me. So do you think that tarnished maybe your self-esteem or how did they react when you were like, I want to do fashion now after all those years? I think that because it was so like dark for so long at home with what like I was going through, they were just like ready to take anything that was not partying. Like they were like, okay, as anything, if it was jam and I was talking about something that they could see was genuine, they were just like, let's go. Like trying to keep calm almost, you know, yeah. like let's do it, let's do it. No, they were definitely excited. Like they kept the faith, thank God. And uh, supported me through anything that was, they didn't mind the chopping and changing. They just wanted me to be on our path at all. Yeah. That's brilliant. That's amazing. And like starting a, like your own business as well. Like when you first started off, like were you, did you ever imagine that you'd be where you are now? Because like starting a small business, like I know for myself as well, it's mm -hmm. like those like few years, they're tough. Joe, you know, like Instagram is like your best friend because you have to mm. promote on Instagram. But like, did you find like in any way that you're like, I need to give up here because it's not going anywhere? Or were you like, I love this so much that I'm just going to keep going with it. Even if I don't like, you know, explode or I don't get to where I want to be, I'm just mm. going to continue with this because I, I love it. Like, did it fulfill you that much that mm. you're just like... That's a really good question. I think... I, 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 it's a really good question. I don't think I thought about it like that. Well, kind of maybe it's like what you said, it was a subconscious thing. I love what I'm doing. So I'm just going to keep going mm. whether or not it clicks right away. But once you're going through the motions yourself, you don't think about it like that almost. Like it's it, like, I think I just was so grateful that I had found something I liked that made me feel good. I was so grateful. And I do know it's rare. Like you said, mm -hmm. anyone you're looking in on that has their shit sorted, it's like, fuck's sake. They, <laughs> they, you know, but I think I was so grateful that I found something that was productive that I enjoyed. I couldn't believe it. Like I didn't mm. think I was put on this earth to be productive until I found fashion. So every day it was just like class. I don't hate getting out of bed. Mm. Um, I don't hate, like I don't hate getting up in the morning. So like, let's definitely go with this. Um, I think it kind of flow like, flowed like that. And then once I found the hats, because they were so dramatic, uh, whatever, they kind of started selling themselves. And once you combine something that you don't hate getting out of the bed in the morning, plus making money. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Do you remember that hat that I got in the charity shop? And it was like that big purple one. That's, is that where it started from? Cause uh, so I you got was this, like, I started. Yeah, I, so I basically, <laughs> I started Rashid. No, I'm joking. So I had this, it was before we went yeah. to London and I got, yeah. had this massive purple hat. I remember hat. I wore one of the, the purple hat before. <laughs> oh my God. I looked she like, the, like grim, a, the Grim Reaper. <laughs> I looked, I looked, looked like I was about to scrawl, like scrawl on the ground through town going, hur, 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 hur. Yeah, no, the fur hat on top <laughs> of my head. Like, going, you know, hur, hur, hur. From Mario, you know, Toad. Uh, yeah, 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 like, exactly. Yeah. But I remember you were like, uh, you're like, can I buy it off you? And I was like, no, I'm going to London. Like, I really like this I hat. And you go, hounding. You're, you're like hounding. And then she goes, fine, I'm just going to go make my own one then. Oh my God. Did I say that to That's you? That's literally what you said. Wow. You're like, I'm just going to go make my own hat then. <laughs> and then I, boom. Then boom. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't remember saying that specifically. I remember seeing your hat and being like, wow, wow, wow. And <laughs> traveling to the charity shop as if she was going to have another. It's like, no. <laughs> like, That's not how charity shops work. No. no. Oh and I was God. just trying to convince her she had another 
was like, no, Emer was only here a few days ago. It's this big hat. Like, please. I was obsessed with it. And I really wanted you to sell me it. So I think I had, I, I think I had been drawn to hats. And I think mm. I was messaging people's hats, big faux fur hats online who I couldn't afford. Yeah. International businesses. And then I just kind of combined, okay, something like, like I can't afford in the right material like something that I just I just like I'll make my own yeah that but like <laughs> your hats are nicer than the one that I had you know what I mean yeah so like you kind of have a win-win there <laughs> and also what I was gonna I'll still ask buy you, it off you yeah I mean <laughs> you know what you can just have it by now like I can't wear it anymore I think I wore it like once remember in London when you wore it's it so I nice wore it like once though. yeah it's stunning yeah. but like I'm I don't know I feel like I need a, a long a long head of hair for yeah. hats now yeah. at the moment but also as well you know the way like hats started off with everything what was like the first kind of oh my god like I'm being recognized so like if it's maybe like an influencer or like celebrity like what kind of made your business take off I think um nothing felt good until Doja Cat because uh it wasn't someone that I was inspired by yeah it's Uh, okay I can say it because none of them are going to be listening Ariana Grande it was just a celebrity that I knew other people were obsessed with would never listen to her music would never watch an interview by her Uh, do you know Vanessa Hudgens like it's just like lol that girl from High School Musical Mm. it's not you just they're just famous so it's extra cool for five minutes but actually they didn't pay and they didn't tag you and they they didn't communicate with you so it actually doesn't feel good it just feels good like because everyone else thinks it feels good but uh it doesn't like and what makes you feel better would be like a granny that actually paid and was like i wore it to this and i loved it that would feel better than ariana a dark blurry photo of ariana grande and you're you have to run around being like that was mine yeah (laughs) um so i think until doja cat it was like okay finally someone that is at their level is communicating with me directly is tagging me is excited by the designs like fuck you this hat is the best thing i own fuck you bitch like she's crazy the way she talks and like uh, no one had been that excited i had never been that excited you know so i think that was until that it didn't feel good and until that people weren't listening Mm. until the doja cat moment like people were not listening it was me just shoving it down people's throats i never (laughs) thought about it that way Never thought about yeah. it that way. Because like, obviously, like, we're so inclined to look at celebrities and go, oh, my God. And mm. like, when you see, like, obviously, like, we all watch High School Musical. But I saw that and I was like, that's amazing. Yeah. But then if you think about it, you're not getting recognition for it. And yeah. to them, it's nothing. They're just putting on yeah. it and going, la, la, la. Like, the, yeah. did they, did she contact you directly? She did, yeah. Yeah. But, which is, like, cool, I guess. But I think it's almost cooler for someone else. Like, like you said, if you see it, if if, if I see mm. a friend doing something like that, I'm like, I want to know every detail. But it's like, like I said, when you're, when you're in it yourself, you're going through the motions. It's like, they didn't pay, they didn't tag, mm-hmm. they didn't care. So, um, it's like when, like, like I said, until Doja Cat, it's like, okay, this feels good. And it's someone I would sit and watch interviews. I would listen to her music. I listened to her music the whole way through my final year of college I named one of my jackets the Doja jacket in my final year of mm. college so obviously that would just felt surreal and uh yeah and um, do you think that um like when before the Doja Cat thing mm. did celebrities or people with the big following <laughs> like public figures wearing your designs did it directly translate into more business um <clears throat> I think because they are like a luxury, like the, I use expensive, I use ex- very expensive faux fur. It's never going to be like an overnight thing. Yeah. You're not to spe- you're not deciding to drop 200 euro just because Vanessa Hudgens from High School Music Award. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it doesn't work that way, but maybe you'll get new followers and then down the line, it's- They'll ask for yeah. Christmas or birthdays yeah, yeah, and stuff. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And I used to sell cheaper hats when I first started. Like I went into Urban Outfitters with them within my first, like- uh, when I first started making them and it was a much cheaper fur, but I just saw the quality was deteriorating so easily. Yeah. Like stand in the rain one day and it just looks skanky. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, is that a nice word? <laughs> um, so I think that I just said, like, fuck it. I don't care. I'd say there's so many people that say, oh, it's overpriced, whatever. But I would rather, there's no more expensive option yeah, with yeah. my suppliers. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, there's no a more expensive option by the meter. So I'd rather do that and it actually will last someone a life. Um, and I'd rather it be expensive, you know. Like, one sale and the person will have it for life over 10 uh, flipping sales and they, they'll get ruined real easily. Okay, and they're all handmade as well, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, Jesus. They're lined, but still. 
Oh, girls. Very stunning. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, the one from the charity shop was not lying. So anyway, so we're in a win here. Um, would you, did you have any bad experiences with like people, you know, because Giving of... out about the price. Or I was going to say with like follower base being like, I have followers, so I deserve a free hat. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, two very big questions. Yeah, so, I'd like to, yeah. You don't have to answer though the one about influencers because I'd say you're probably, maybe you're sick of getting that question. Yeah. I don't know. No. I, because a lot of people mm. asked in my stories and um, yeah, that was probably the most asked question being really? like, what What's are the, the cheap? Buzz? Because you do, you you do like ex- have an expose on your stories. Now I am very entertained by them, but obviously <laughs> I have an expose section. Yeah, it's literally like Rashida's going to expose I these love influencers asking for free hats, asking for freebies <laughs> as she should. You know what I mean? Because yeah. people are so cheeky, you know, these days, but in yeah. fair, like that is how their brain works. They're like, mm. maybe I'll get this for free, do you know? Yeah. Um, because it is that their following is their currency. So it, yeah. it's, it's just so natural for them to be like is one mm. but it have yeah so do you have any extra any funny stories, any funny you stories. Don't have na- names are not yeah. included no. just like well i think it's been of be- and i didn't know this at the time but it's been of benefit to me to expose a people <laughs> like it's been the best decision i've ever made <laughs> Because not only has it meant then that the real ones will contact me and be like, listen, I understand you've been fucked over. I still want a free hat, but I'm going to do this, that, and the third for you. And that's fair enough because yeah. that then is a business transaction. Yeah. It is, yeah. And I was going to make one recently, but I'm just getting a bit sick of them myself. But this girl, like, like you just said, that's a business transaction. If you are an influencer... It, this is your business. Yeah. And I think that they go around a bit jaded. It's like, people don't take us seriously. This is a real career. But then do take it seriously. Mm. Like, let your messages to me be of value or to anyone. Like, a, a bit of, a few sentences. This is where I'll post it. Uh, do you know? Or I have this following. I think I like this design. Even if you've gone through my website. Like, it just, those little things will mean so much to the person that's giving it to you rather than just, can I have a free hat? Yeah. And I say, what color do you want? And they say, what do you have? And it's like, you haven't even looked. Thought about yeah, it. you're already putting in too much work for yeah. them. It's, it's like, like they you... just want it for the, th- the having it. They, yeah. they haven't thought past about it, it once. It. It's like, I deserve it nearly. It's like, yeah. oh, well, like she's getting a free hat. So I'm just going to see if I can get a free hat. But I just think I don't agree with the asking for free. Mm. Like, especially when you're such a small business. Now, obviously you have people working for you. Because like, there's no way, do you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like, there's no way you can do everything yeah. on your own. But still, I just don't agree with it. I don't care if there's a million and gajillion followers. It's like asking someone something for free is just really weird to me but then again i'm not in that world mm. so i don't know how things work i don't know how sponsorships work i don't know anything so i'm like I can, for me yeah. personally i could ne- like say for example if i went viral on tiktok and i got five million followers i'd never be like hey so can i have a free mm. hat it just doesn't sit right with me but then I guess if that's the kind of life they're living and if they are used to getting free things all the time, does anyone know what I mean? I completely know what you're saying. And like, let's say before I started the business, I would have been of that mindset. Yeah. Because it's like almost like this other world. It's the real world. Like you work for, you get paid. But I think that now that I'm in the business, I see the value of their following like it's how I grow I'm not putting money into ads I'm not paying radios to mention it's my way to market myself yeah. so of course it, it uh, um it costs money so they're almost some of them are doing me a favor if they've got five million followers and I'm giving them just a hat they they would require actually payment from brands on top of that so they feel they're doing me a favor it's like okay I'll take the hat and I won't charge you because you're a small business yeah okay so I get it's you. it's their career like it's their bread and butter it's how they have these nice things is getting paid by brands so in a sense they're doing you a favor if they do have a big following following okay i get it see i i wouldn't be promoting anything so i don't get it do you know what i mean do you get i get what you mean though so basically it's it even it doesn't matter if it you know costs you money to make or whatever but there it's being in ret- returned in yeah. some form because you'll get followers or 100 someone will go oh that's a nice hat i'll buy one myself okay i yeah. get it now obviously i did understand at the start but i still just couldn't believe yeah. that people would be like kind of asking you them for free mm-hmm. because i'm like obviously you can afford it mm-hmm. but then i didn't look at it that way it's it does work both ways yeah. i get i do get it like yeah. sure surely you get offered things for free all the time yeah i do and uh, now I wouldn't reach out to someone yeah, if I wanted something for free I, yeah. I, no I'm not interested <laughs> now the odd time say if it's for charity I would pay for it 
And if someone's hand making someone something like when people people do message me about crochet things and I'm like really particular, it would go it would literally go to waste if you make something that I don't like. Mm. So I know that um I usually know if it's someone like Irish, I will promote it anyway and pay for it anyway mm. if I have the money. But like people have reached out to me before and before I make the money that I make now and I felt bad that I wasn't able to pay for it, mm. you know? Yeah. Um I don't know, like I you probably see both sides. I see both sides of it. Now, I know from when, remember that girl, she got exposed from like, she was reaching out to an Irish hotel. The hotel, I was only thinking about this. Now, I, I, I remember this. seeing that, but, and this is before I was an influencer and I was just like, yeah, fuck her, stupid bitch. You know, just get <laughs> jumping on the bandwagon. Yeah. And now looking back at it, I'm like, fuck that hotel. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's so, it was such an invasion of her privacy to screenshot her whole message mm. and like oh, yeah. put that up being like, oh, like this is what I'll do for you if you let me stay for free. She wasn't like, all you could say is reply no. Was her name in it? Yeah, her name was in it. Stop. Yeah, and people That's were giving her that. Do. No, names They were is giving not. her death over it. It was like, oh, it was God. actually, it was probably horrible for her for like to go through that. Especially Irish people are so um, vindictive or something. Mm, yeah. And just want to be like, yeah, fuck, <laughs> fuck <laughs> them, yeah. You know, Ebris up the front. Go, yeah. <laughs> go to hell. <laughs> you know. Um, so I don't know. It is like, I, I don't know where I draw the line with mm, things. Mm. Um, now, sometimes I do contact my managers and I'm like, could you get me a gifting for this in particular? If I'm like using it all the time and I'll be like, I'll give them an ad, you know, like yeah. say with, but there was something now I got my, um, this is actually a horrible story. I got my manager to reach out to this brand um, that I use all the time. And I was like, oh, I'd love to work with them now. And she was like, I actually already reached out to them. And they said they wouldn't work with you because you did OnlyFans. Like ridiculous. So then I have to, no. I literally stopped pay, I stopped buying from them because yeah. I was like, I don't want to support. That's ridiculous. Isn't that hard? It made That's me really, ridiculous. it actually made me really upset. upset. I was yeah, really obviously. upset. And I'd already tagged, like put, you know, given them, you know, put them on my story and tagged them. And that's where I kind of, ne oh, this no. is only recently. Rewind so time I've like, them. yeah, I've also been like putting in, um, boundaries with gifting now as well because it's like these brands will send me stuff for free for a story but they won't work with me because I'm not marketable mm. so or they like they were sending it to you yeah they, were, they, they started sending That's me so gifting weird. but they wouldn't work with me because oh. I did OnlyFans that's very strange. Which is really horrible because it's mm. just like, oh, she's going to promote us for free anyway. So we'll just make up. Some they could have just so said sad. no in a nice way as well. Yeah. Like it's really. They, they gave that reason to your manager. Yeah. That's really sad. Yeah. So now I'm just like, I don't think I would do. I'm not going to do gifting promotions anymore because it's just like. Yeah. The, they, I you feel have your you, barriers up now. Yeah. It's I, like and I'm like, I'm a person as well. Mm. And I don't want to turn my whole Instagram into like a, just a business thing because I prefer doing the podcast and like talk sorry this interview is supposed to be about you no, no, <laughs> I was like let's talk about me for a second it's interesting <laughs> no, it so is that's interesting. where I'm coming from with the whole yeah. like gifting and promoting things and so uh, the odd time I have said no to things that I know I just wouldn't like that I wouldn't use mm -hmm. um because it all adds to waste as well like there's mm -hmm. a huge with influencers on PR lists, you, you know, you're not consenting to things that are being sent to your house most of the time, especially with skincare, makeup. Oh and it's God. like, what person needs like 15 different cleansers or like yeah. 14 different moisturizers? They're just like, go, I'm lucky I have sisters and a mom and a stepmom. Like I can give these things away if they do get sent to me and I don't like them. But it's like, I don't need all of these things all the time. It's scary. Um, and I can't even imagine if I was on PR lists for... Uh, fashion because you probably get sent so many yeah. free clothes mm. most of the people I send to would have like a separate address for where the stuff is going send, yeah. it, send it to this address that's like my like the house I send yeah. things to <laughs> like PO box sort yeah, of thing yeah. yeah and you do all that manually like you drive around like no no I'd post it <laughs> you post it I, I saw <laughs> your I saw your story get your delivery cap on yeah, yeah you've I'm done it before <laughs> like you, you you're very good though like you'll meet people in person and stuff like yeah. that like you're which I think is so nice as well because it's like more personal mm. like I feel like your brand is really personal like every time I think about Rashid I'm like oh she it's just her on her own in her bedroom or in her garage <laughs> garage in her garage <laughs> just like with one like little light yeah, on sewing sewing just yeah. on your own but it's just so nice because it's it, I think your brand is just so personal and like you are in control of your Instagram mm. you're in control of like everything yeah. that goes on like yeah. even with like your orders I'm sure you're mm -hmm. on your own kind of doing yeah. it and then you have to boss people around and tell them what to do I have I have Ellen my full-time employee and then I have some interns like the, every like let's say fashion college in the country requires 60 hours with a designer and there's not that many so it's definitely my most like asked question 
can I be your intern or whatever? So I, I it's quite stressful though having new people in. Like because oh, you have to train them in, it yeah. probably takes time. There was days around Christmas where the studio was full. It was like three, four people, maybe four at the max, and I wouldn't get anything done because th- they're asking this. They're what do I do here? Oh uh, yeah. Someone made a mistake. Something, something. So and you probably waste materials from doing all of that as well. No, because I wouldn't let them touch the materials. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Like Ellen would be this like the seamstress. Let's say she's yeah. been training with me like for a year over a year now and I've trained her up and now she's good to go she's a mm. machine the two of us together we'd knock them out but the interns would be doing everything else packaging boxes uh I wouldn't even nearly let them write the addresses to be honest like I'm that <laughs> <laughs> Come here, oh my God. <laughs> like the handwritten notes and stuff like that they'll do but anything that could be messed up no. It's too it's no. too much on the line for no. you. Yeah. There's no room for error. Yeah. The postman are already gonna use any excuse to send it to the wrong place or it's gonna get lost anyway. Yeah. On post are gonna lose your parcels anyway. <laughs> so if you write the address wrong, no. Yeah. And I'll notice typos so that that's it scratched. I won't trust any new person. Yeah. Like, I won't give you the addresses. Like My postman in my old apartment, we literally used to watch out the window for him because <laughs> he would show up with all these boxes and he wouldn't even knock on the door. He'd look around and be like, no one here and then we'd see him walk back to the van we'd run downstairs I fell down the stairs once trying to run after him and I opened the door and no shoes on excuse me excuse me I anything. know those parcels are for me yeah and then, anything for number five anything for number five and like oh he would look down and be God. like uh no uh, yeah, yeah yeah actually I'd be like you fucker they'll and I, use any excuse yeah that's to not send it. Imagine buying especially like one of your hats as well like imagine buying that and expecting that for Christmas and then being gone somewhere no have you gotten that oh it's a nightmare it's yeah no it's so bad but it's never gonna be for my uh because of my fault if you got that yeah makes sense. of course like i like i'm so crazy about those address labels <laughs> like i poor one of the poor interns her writing was illegible and like the, we, we spent most of our hours me just trying to teach her how to write well like oh my god her writing was illegible <laughs> I felt so I felt so bad I was abusing her about her handwriting like it just needs to be clear and uh, they'll lose it anyway like they really will so we're I'm using DHL now it's like a luxury version of On Post and oh, they're stunning. they're amazing DHL are great there was a guy when I was pregnant and he carried up a mattress up the stairs on his own oh you loved him I loved him and then when the baby him. came he was like how's the baby he remembered me from being pregnant Aww. beforehand and he would he would actually not even call the doorbell he'd go in the front door of the building and just bring up my package for me it's which you're not supposed to do it's a luxury service <laughs> it really is though I, Kez I gave a bottle of wine to at Christmas my DHL guy yeah like we text I'm like will you give me 10 minutes like the address labels aren't ready and he's like fine and he sits out on his phone like uh, it's so much better dealing that way rather than if I lose a parcel with on post they won't you're never going to hear back you're filling out claims forms so it's worth it that extra 10 euro every uh post with dhl for like such an expensive item like it's very very worth it okay yeah so do you urge people then to get the dhl option on yeah. your on your hat for december and november i removed on post from my website like, oh okay it was ju- you, uh, your only option was dhl because mm. it was too like there was too much going on and too many orders and too many lost parcels because they were overrun D- um, on post themselves mm. so i removed it and dhl were the only thing okay yeah so fair enough but DHL lost only one parcel my whole life and it was going to Doge Cat. What? <gasps> yeah. Fuck off. One parcel they've ever lost. And it was, I had spent maybe two months in and out, because it was around Christmas, in and out of uh, orders, chipping away at a full length leather and faux fur coat, boots, bag, hat, like a whole two months of work or whatever and sent it over at Gonzo. Fuck off. Th- and they uh, never found it. No, it, it was just gone. It was just gone. What? Yeah. I Did st- you not have a mental breakdown? It was so sad. It was really sad, but we've moved on. And what's so funny, I was like, said it to her, oh, the parcel's lost. And she was like, send me the tracking number and I'll try to help. Like, I'll get one of my assistants try to help you find it. So sound. But then like, then my next reply with the tracking number is just seen it. And they're like, she was like, wait, who again? So like, I think she had even forgotten she had ordered it from me. And my moment was gone. Like, Mm. Do you know? Oh my god! And she was gonna pay. Do you? Ever, oh, so like it's? Uh, did you do it again? Or are you? No, gonna... I'd say she like think about how much she's got going on. Like if I had like I feel like if I pushed it again, I would have annoyed her. Yeah. Like, did you ever find that parcel? You know, like <laughs> she literally's like what coat? 
but oh. was so sad for me like and I had no photos of it because I wanted her to just get it really quickly oh. second it was made it was like DHL so um but yeah I've moved on now yeah so, so good. and but. do you ever feel though like with like with these celebrities like if you were to eat like talking to them like when you're texting them does it does it not take like hours to reply because like I'd be just sitting there being like uh because anything you'd say yeah. you'd be so careful and especially when it's coming to like discuss like like sizes and like every message you send are you not like they're not gonna reply to this it's nerve-wracking for sure oh my god like, she's my screensaver <laughs> <laughs> it's no. like an unbalanced relationship no it's really unhealthy that used to be me and my boyfriend my screensaver <laughs> <laughs> it's really unhealthy it actually is really unhealthy like I'm obsessed with her because it's like okay someone I was already obsessed with is now communicates with me I've like never felt this feeling lives up to your expectations as well like I yeah. always I remember like when I was obsessed with Eminem when I was younger like <laughs> it was like never meet your heroes because yeah. like I heard a story of him being like an asshole and I was like it that whole story put me off like wanting to meet any of my heroes wait who, who? Uh, Eminem oh <laughs> very bad uh, but like uh, you know the way if you're loving 100%. a celebrity and then you meet them and it's like oh I've never met Eminem but uh, what I'm saying is like 100%. I heard that he wasn't very pleasant which put me off ever wanting to meet yeah. people that I love yeah so like if I ever met Miley Cyrus I'd be devastated if she was an arsehole yeah. which I don't think she is but you know 100% I think she has made me sounder to people like no word of a lie. Yeah. Because if Doja Cat can find the time to reply and like like the way that she communicates with me, I cannot believe it. And she's not just doing it to me. Like you said, like she's living up to it. She There's no way it's like she's an asshole to everyone else and nice to me. Like she, the way she communicates with me, I cannot believe that it's Doja Cat. And she sends me selfies, smoking ciggies in her gaff with my hat on. And I'm like, can I screenshot this? <laughs> but I don't. Oh my God. But like, uh, just for her to make me feel so special, even though I know I'm nothing to her, like she's just having the crack, taking a selfie, just some random designer from Ireland. And to, to make me feel so special, it, like for you, then if I get a message on Instagram that I would have not replied to before, I'll try to take the time. If they're like, how did you get into fashion? And like, do you have any tips with this? Blah, 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 blah. I, I started replying to that stuff because I was like, the importance of just being sound. Mm. Oh my god, that's so true. Like, and I say, like, you're your sound. So, like, you talk to people. Do you know what I mean? Like, but like I say, you get loads of messages as well. And like, sometimes yeah, but they're usually like, just like Ugh. fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not gonna reply to this. Being like, sending love and compassion to you today. Oh my god, you know what? You <laughs> actually, you actually yeah. should. You should start sending. Like, I wish a copy and paste. No, I wish I was one of those people because Sirsha can literally she can get abused by anyone and be like. They're going through a hard time. Hurt people, hurt wow. people. Sending love and compassion out their way and praying for you and all. And I'm just like seething with rage because we've all been in low places. We've all been hit rock bottom. I have never in my life had the urgency when I'm so depressed down in the dumps being like, I'm going to make an anonymous account and send someone a fucking horrible message. Like, no, obviously not. No. Like what psychopath goes yeah. through that sort of like um, <laughs> thought process? Like, I know. It's like a, uh, like coping mechanism to attack yeah. people online but maybe that's just because I'm online I don't know maybe I have other bad coping mechanisms that I do have but, you um, got hate online ever as a curiosity yeah really yeah, Whoa, it's since like, the influencer stuff before that you know about one time those audio messages Abu oh abusive. yeah absolutely oh, arse God. arse holes I'll tell you after <laughs> oh I'll tell you after definitely got hate but I I do love it a bit like I love it a bit <laughs> Yeah, like you, you kind of throw. I feel like you, you like are, That's like you don't really, get, you know, you just don't really give a fuck though. I feel maybe or I, I well, don't you know give why off. I thrive off it. Yeah. Adam says it to me. He's like, I don't understand that. He's like, I'm still trying to work that out. We were at the Gossies and we were talking to Dami Hope, and he was saying I was getting hate off this or whatever. I was like, I thrive off that shit, and he was like, Oh my god, you're so fucking weird. <laughs> Who's Dami Hope? He was in Love Island. Oh right, yeah. He was at the Gossies talking shy, but. I think like I th I think I, I don't know why I thrive off it I think you get so much of like yeah 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 so you're like something different it's something different <laughs> <laughs> someone mix it up it's something different and I'll, I'll more likely reply to something like that where and I'll have a debate with some old woman or like someone that's against fur or someone that didn't like something I said on the late late like I will sit and debate 
with like big long messages but then I'm ignoring the person that's like I love your brand yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that is like you're giving them the, the haters the time but like yeah my mum says don't give them oxygen and I'm like I am hooking them up to oxygen tanks <laughs> you're literally giving them your oxygen you're taking it out of your lungs oh my god that's so good but like I feel like as well haters are your motivators no yeah yeah I just know I, I couldn't deal with that now the both of you deal with it well I would be on the floor really so, yeah I'm just why explain like uh, so whenever whenever when I did the when I do the breast cancer yeah. um, I had iconic I had yeah a bit iconic like really good if anyone doesn't know it's like basically every year I do like a fundraiser uh, all my tattoos are for breast cancer like the money goes to breast cancer anyway for the whole month of October mm. I had a, someone comment on the breast cancer post the, this is horrible though like I, she was like I don't understand so you know the way there, there's a slogan for breast cancer Oh, or any cancer it's like fuck cancer mm. that's like I've seen so many like like fundraisers slogans and on the sheet the tattoo sheet it said like one of the tattoos that you could get would be fuck cancer yeah. I have tattooed multiple <laughs> fuck cancers and this person commented on it being like this is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen like you're you know using the words fuck cancer like I'm a survivor and I find that really offensive and no. I was just like how are you finding something negative in something so Worthwhile. fucking yeah like how but like that like ate me up and for really? literally a week later like I couldn't even post the tattoos because I was just <gasps> like oh my god no I did like I I was gonna reply to it but then I was like no I just deleted it and moved on but like I don't know mm. with like even like influencers in general like I scroll through people's like posts and people are commenting horrific stuff like we talked about last night with the like Hayley Bieber and Selena Gomez oh my it's god it's like so scary but like I I, I think it's that's so interesting that you like thrive off it mm. I should kind of look at it that way because like people are thinking about you so like you're obviously important yeah <laughs> do you know <laughs> no well I think I read recently it was like you're gonna learn from the person that disagrees with you you're not gonna like you're not gonna learn from someone commenting like yeah yeah. <laughs> but you're gonna learn if you chat to the person that hates you yeah but most of the time I will just end up blocking them after the debate so I'm like I'm being a bit hypocritical because I'm like yeah I'll chat to you in five minutes but like bye yeah but I think you will learn a bit of something but maybe it's like both of us our need to be liked like me replying and engaging maybe that comes from my need want for them to like approve me do you mm, know what I mean yeah. and then also you not liking it is the same thing so mm. I don't know it, like I feel like they're the both the same thing it's just like different ways of coping mm. and have you ever gotten anyone like complaining to you about like their hats or like not arriving in time and like being like horrible like just as like a customer not just mm. like someone being like I disagree with what you said yeah I think the thank god there's been no hats sent back because like I said I'm psycho with the, this shit but I think there's been like you deal with psychos once like the doja cat and the late late show happened it, it just went to a wider audience and then it was like psycho customers it's written all over you know no returns policy and there's just people that are like just you know a family showed up at my old college like really like you, enoch burke style like just we, they found the address on the internet uh the grafton academy they're just trying to give back hats they had bought so many hats and they were what? really crazy Wait, about what? it yeah but i should have known like they're buying too many hats explain for i'm, I'm confused normal. what do you Why mean were they buying it's hats? such a long story no no they were they were buying hats to keep the hats yeah but then it was like it was i won't say the name it's it's so hard not to say the name because my it's like a slogan in my family they say it to torment me. The family name. It's so, such a funny name. But they bought hats and then they returned them. They were just trying to return them and it was the wrong colours and they didn't want them anymore and too many of them looked the same. And it was just, I was dealing with a family <laughs> that... <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> What's going on here? I don't, I don't know. But I had then I had to return... Um, they wanted a snoo or the, uh, they bought ears and they then wanted to, they wanted to swap the snoods. I said, don't do swaps, but I did it for them anyway. And yeah. then they sent the snood to the wrong place, just sent it to the completely wrong place. And then I had already sent back because she was harassing me, like abuse. Like, you know, I need them for my sister's Christmas birthday, Christmas present. Uh, like, it was just like abuse of then. Like oh I was like God. crying about it at one stage to my family. They were abusing me. It was all around the hat. So you you will deal with of course you're gonna come across as you grow. And like, I learned so much from that. Only deal through email then, uh, cause they had gotten my phone number cause I gave it to them. <laughs> like throughout, <laughs> throughout one of the like messages, you know, can I text you or anyway. So I just realized uh, you learn from those things. It's like yeah. only deal with them through email. 
you know, write the policy even in bolder, you know, like I just, I learned from it, but I, I've dealt with Stephanie psychos. Yeah. Oh my God. That's horrible. Showing up to your college though. Yeah, Such an invasion. <laughs> I wasn't there. I don't go there. With anymore. picket fences. Like I don't go there. Crazy. Anymore. Yeah. The oh picket, what, what did I say? Picket fences. What? My, Pitchforks. My principal called me and was like, there's a, a man here called, you know, here for you about some ears. And I was like, is this, <laughs> is this real life? And I was getting abuse from the sister, the mother. Oh my God. So I just at that stage, you know, return, like give them all their money back. I just want you out of my life. Oh, yeah. that's horrible. I don't care if you're a possible customer. Yeah. Jesus, I'm thinking about this now, <laughs> just imagining. How many hats did you have to make for them? Like, oh my God. I think, I think it was f- three, four hats, a snood, some ears. Oh my God. And, uh, like, I can't, don't know how many they ended up with between all the returns. Maybe they have two now. I'd love to know the full story after this. Read <laughs> yeah, yeah, story. Same. I, need, I need to know the like second names and stuff like that because so I find that. it very interesting. Is there anything that like you, like your main like goal is now? Like obviously you've, reach like with like your one of your favorite artists ever mm. doja cat is there anything now that you're just like i would love to see blah blah, blah wearing my hat or i would love to go to the met gala is there anything that like yeah. is your goal with your brand or just for yourself in general keep dressing doja cat for sure i'm making her bikini at the moment oh my a god fur bikini. So for a bikini love um i think more just to branch out it's so scary like once you get one product down and you've got ellen churning them out and it took a year to get you there it's like oh god what now we've like move on to jackets or coats um now i have to teach ellen how to make jackets and coats like i don't have the foundation behind me like a factory or seamstresses because uh faux fur is very niche like you've got it in your eyes nose ears ass after a day of work <laughs> every crevice in your body it's breaking your sewing machine you really like I've had people that have said I can't work like I've got fur in my nose I got an allergy like it's really a niche uh, material so I it feels like I have to do it all myself there's like it doesn't feel like there's I I can go to a factory and get help and it's certainly not in Ireland and I want them to say handmade in Ireland oh yeah I don't Mm. want them to say handmade somewhere else so it's just about trying to find like right now I want to just try to build a foundation behind me and it's like I need to start churning out other products like I, I'm bored of the hats. Oh okay. yeah, well, yeah. I'm like, like, fine. I have the snoods and blah blah, but I just want to start churning out clothing and in different sizes. Like that's another thing, sizing. So I just need to really take a step back and stop rushing and just uh, build like the background work so that mm. I can move forward. Would you ever discontinue the hats? That's so that then like in a few years time, yeah. be like, oh my God, I have so this cool. Rashid vintage Archive. hat that you can't get yeah. anymore. That's on like eBay for like a thousand. You know? I'd love to because it would only create more of a demand but I yeah. think I just love the money too much <laughs> <laughs> so fair yeah. like imagine saying no to a sale no like that's <laughs> so good though I love how you like admit that because like obviously everyone loves money like mm-hmm. I, I, people say that money doesn't make you happy during like, this sh- economy are you fucking joking obviously. of course it makes you happy no but that's Fuck so off, it's so like. ignorant though to say those things where it's like you have you literally have to have money to survive so I like know. obviously that's going to have an effect of on your mental health of course it's going to make you yeah. happy and like thrive off that yeah. get them sales in yeah imagine saying no to one no no have you ever had to like where you're like i can't make a fucking hat again i'm done well i that's the bad thing now about having ellen like because she let's say only comes like a wednesday thursday friday saturday so then like if i get orders or if i have someone that's like i need my hat for tomorrow i'm like oh (laughs) fuck (laughs) ellen's in college though we can't like i just uh, now i have a mental block against making them yeah like okay. I'll be sitting there doing like eyelets for this or I'll be replying to customers or I'll do anything but make a hat. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it's gotten to that stage. Like, oh, oh so what God. do you do to motivate yourself then to do it? Like if, if someone's asking for it. Just in general. I'll like drive if- to Ellen's house with the pieces cut out for her. <laughs> <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> oh, oh, I my will. God. <laughs> Are you scary? I will. Are you scary as a manager? Or like, no, 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 no. You don't give out. No, <laughs> no. You just show up at their house. Because like-, uh, like you bounce off someone else's energy. Like if they're real nonchalant about it, which I haven't had, you're going to be, you're going to be like, we have to, you know, sit down and yeah. have a discussion. Mm. But like Ellen is like, 
so she's the opposite of that like she's nervous so i would never want to add to that does that make yeah, sense of course. course you're not going to be like ellen like what the hell like so she's just so humble so wants to do well takes so much pride in her work so i just want to like help her through it it's like okay this happened to me two years ago of course you're gonna make mistakes it's only natural and i i said this before you decide the vibes when you're the boss mm. and that's like draining Cause like my mood, I can't keep up with myself. It's either really happy or really low. So that's so draining that I have to find some sort of middle ground every day because other people are there. Mm-hmm. They're like, mm-hmm. I, like I can't go in high as a kite and then really low. So I have to try to like bring the vibes, make sure they're like just somewhat good, but in the middle. And <laughs> <laughs> it can be draining. Somewhat, yeah. Especially like when you're in those moods, like and like I find it when I'm working as well, like because I'm talking to people mm-hmm. all the time, like it's nearly like a show you're acting yeah. nearly not acting because like uh, like but you are putting on some form of a show because mm. for every single person that comes in for me it's like I want to give everyone the same experience yeah and I like it's so like vibes are obviously so easily mm. like bounced off each other so especially working in an environment like that where it's like there's like a time that you, this needs to be done if you're going in being like blah blah blah, mm. blah like yeah you probably wouldn't get it done. No. And you have to basically act mm. for them. You're really good for that. You bring the vibes. Emer's so good at talking. everyone like, with a good experience, I yeah. feel. Like, I don't know, but I'd say even if you're like hungover, they're going to leave being like, I'll go back to her. Really? Yeah, think yeah, so? yeah, definitely, yeah. It must have been the year of acting college, to be honest. But you're like, like that that woman like you meet in the hairdresser that you just start telling your whole life story Exactly, to. yeah. Do you think so? I agree, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that, because yeah. I feel like I tell everyone my life story. So like, yeah. I know that, definitely that's therapy like, sessions just, for people. That will just make them open up even more though, you know? Okay, I love that, wow. I feel like you, I'd say you're a few people's therapists, no? They're like, oh, I'm one. just going to get a tattoo to speak to Emer. <laughs> 100%. And you know what I found is a lot, it's a lot of males that uh <laughs> like i only had males today and it's a lot of males that but like, they, they feel like they can't wow. talk to their friends sometimes yeah. so they need like a, an outlet for as a woman yeah a lot sometimes. of males are opening up like sure once i had to literally ask a guy like i was like look my next client's here we can talk again you know <laughs> next time but like he actually no. sat down on the couch and was like yeah so then she was liking her ex's <laughs> instagrams and i was like <laughs> So I sometimes like take it too far. I'm yeah. like so invested in it. But like, it's not that I, Jesus, if anyone's listening to this, it's not that I'm acting. Of course, I'm always interested. But there is that pressure of always having to be the energy, like the energy or happy or it's a pressure, but it'll take you far with mm. it. You yeah, it's I mean? such it's a important. skill. Yeah. yeah. Like oh it's, it's, God, a, it's a shit pressure, but it's going to be what like keeps you going and like it gets you your regulars, you know, they're covered in tats. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> just they have for, no room. Just left. for a therapy session. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like a two and one, killing yeah. two birds with one stone. If so, you make okay. Miley Cyrus a hat, I'll have to block you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Triggered. <laughs> <laughs> like I'll just have to block. Like that's just one person. I know it's coming as well. It's definitely. I wouldn't be. A I'd big be so Miley happy. Fan. I'd be so follow. happy for you though. Like yeah, but she would rock You're it. Obsessed. No, with it's Amer. it's <laughs> it, no, but like you know the way you have her as like your screensaver. Yeah. Like she's like the screensaver of my brain. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like everything's just Miley, 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 mm. Miley. But I think like remember we were talking with Billy about the things that like I use like celebrities to like mask escape escape yeah. yeah so like i use celebrities to, like i like focus on a celebrity instead of focusing on myself mm. oh god we're getting deep here okay, that's right. okay though <laughs> that would be like one of my answers to how do you get out of a rut like find people that are like your muses mm. oh yeah like what's doja doing today <laughs> Is she wearing my hat right now? Like, if she's not, I'll make her another little one. Little things like that. If you're just watching their interviews, I find those really motivational. Like one of your favorite celebrities, like interviews on YouTube. You'll be sitting eating peanut butter and chocolate on the couch and you'll watch someone you admire saying inspirational stuff and you'll hop off the couch and do something productive. Yeah, That's, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good tip. Yeah. I just doom scroll on my phone. We were talking about this yeah, in the last episode. I was, this I was like episode. trying to dope, dopamine fast. What's doom scroll? Doom scroll is when you're just like getting to bed and you're like, oh, I should probably go to sleep now. But then you take out your phone and you just scroll for literally hours oh and hours. God. It's like self-harm. Yeah. And then you can't sleep after. Yeah. Because you see something triggering or something and then your mind goes. <laughs> sleep <laughs> is like the one thing I don't have like a grasp on in life. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what helps if you take magnesium before bed okay it really really helps thanks so much Rachel thank you you're the best bye guys Mwah. 